Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Amen. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and organs. Praise Him upon the loud cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Somebody ought to be glad to be in God's house once again on today. Amen. I don't know about you, but even in the midst of the cold, even in the midst of not having heat in the building, I know that God is good, God is faithful, and God is true. And so we praise God on today. We'll have our prayer by Minister Catherine McKay Page.
ya les voy a traducir pero básicamente es, es la historia de mi vida en la cual creo que en la vida habemos personas que se nos dan regalos para compartirlos con el mundo uno de los regalos que yo siempre he tenido es el de dar amor siempre que tengo memoria y el segundo es de dar a veces sin tener algo económico pero dar lo que se pueda so, hoy queremos compartir aquí porque también este, eh, este culto se, um, se muestra por internet y mucha gente que no viene a la iglesia lo ve y queremos que tomen en cuenta que eh, todos y todas somos parte de esta comunidad so, quisiera uh, eh, invitar a Pajarita puedes venir y contarnos un poquito de tu historia um, her name, her name, her name is Little Bird and in inglés Bianca en inglés tu nombre se dice pajarita que es Little Bird pero pajarito pequeño es muy lindo es, es algo como de mucho cariño entonces por eso te dije así porque la gente vea que también eres un, un, un pequeño pajarita ¿Quieres compartir con la audiencia este, un poquito de quién tú eres y cómo llegaste aquí? ¿Y por qué? I just got nervous. Okay, no, she just got a little nervous. Okay. Está bien, tienes que... Um, Aquí estás en un lugar seguro. Estás en un lugar donde um, hay amor. Y donde más que todo, esta es la casa de Dios, donde se nos da la bienvenida a todos y a todas, sin importar nuestro pasado, sin importar quiénes somos o quiénes amamos. Um, I told her that this is, she's okay. She's, she's in the house of God. And she's not just in the house of God, she's in a very special house where it is okay to be you. And where it doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't even matter who you love. All that matters is that you are here being yourself. Bueno, yo, soy, yo me llamo Gabriela Pineda, vengo de Honduras. My name is Gabriela Pineda, I come from Honduras. Y le doy gracias a Dios por estar aquí en este lugar maravilloso. And I give thanks to God for being in this place that is so wonderful. And to Ruby for opening the doors of her house. No, it's not here. She is a member of the caravan. Um, many of us saw it on TV. You know, we saw it on CNN. And despite of seeing what we saw on TV, what we did not see, it was the impact that LGBT people in this particular movement had and how much they endured. We endure a lot of things in this country. We do, and, and I'm not gonna deny that. But one of the things that I noticed um, was all of the doors closed to them. Even people who were supposed to be helping immigrants through this caravan looked at them the other way. And sometimes they didn't even feed them. They had food for everybody, but they didn't feed them because they were gay. They had the ability to provide medical care because there were Samaritans there, but they wouldn't do it for them because they were gay. To the point that when they got to the border, a lot of people did get support, and they would and they will feed them, and they will help them because there was a lot of Americans who who got the border and helped people, but guess who they didn't help? The 15 that we went to rescue. And things got so difficult that they held hands together as a community 
and they jumped in the river because in their minds they were going to die anyway. And I'm so glad that we, the people of the District of Columbia, Empowerment Liberation Cathedral, Casa Ruby, Empowerment Justice Center, had a calling in the show. And this, and this is what we do for us. So, bienvenida, bienvenidos y bienvenidas a todos y a todas, porque no importa el pasado y lo que vivieron. Lo importante es el presente. Y yo quería que vinieran aquí, porque quiero que también se den cuenta de que hay un ser divino que también tiene amor para ustedes. Y aquí, en esta iglesia, donde se le abren las puertas a todo el mundo, ustedes tienen un lugar especial para que algún día que se sientan caídos o caídas, regresen y sepan que aquí hay alguien que les espera con amor. The last thing I want to share with them is that they will find hurdles as they continue. And sometimes they will feel the need to be in a space like this. Life is not going to be easy. Life will continue. But I wanted them to remember that there's a place where God loves them. Where God allow, allows them to be who they are. And if there's ever a moment where they need to be remembered that they are loved, the doors of this church will always be open.
going on and revisit some messages that you have proclaimed. So I invite you to look with me today at Acts chapter 16 during this Women's History Month, Acts chapter 16. You'll stand for the reading of God's Word, beginning at verse 24. When you found it, say amen. 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 One person has it. Alright, if you need a Bible app, you can get those on your phone for free. If you need a handheld Bible, we have Brother Sean who can give you a Bible from the back. The word of the Lord reads, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, saying praises unto God. The prisoners heard them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. The keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. I want to give you the thought for this Sunday by tagging this text. I never lost my praise. I never lost my praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I think about all of the women who have made an impact on our world and in our lives, I realize that they must have had rough days, some fearful nights, some heartache, and some pain. They must have had some disappointments and failures along the way. But there was something that kept them going, something that made them keep pressing in spite of what it looked like, something that made them smile and encourage others in the midst of it all. I heard a song many years ago that reminds me of what these women probably told themselves or said to one another. Jermaine Hawkins sang, I lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything. I lost faith in people who said they cared. In time of my crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope, I never lost my joy, I never lost my faith, but most of all, I never lost my praise. Has anybody ever been through anything that almost took your praise? Somebody sitting in the sanctuary today has been wounded in your spirit, you've been even wounded in your body, You've been abused, used, mocked, and outcast, but in spite of it all, I came to say you're still here, and I pray that you have not lost your brains. Some folks have lost family members, lost jobs, lost homes, lost careers, lost identities, and lost love, but you are still here, and you have not lost your brains. Our community can talk about being marginalized, being institutionalized, being dehumanized, and being demonized. We can talk about discrimination, misogyny, ageism, heterosexism, and colorism, but we have survived and we have not lost our brains. In spite of all that life has thrown at you, in spite of how your life has been interrupted, in spite of all the heartache and pain, the disappointments, you never lost your brains. When I get in that space, church, when I begin to think about what the Lord has done, I'll admit I feel like Paul and Silas. I feel like Harriet Tubman. I feel like Mary McLeod with them. And realize I survived. So I tell the world, you might chain me, but you can't stop my prayers. You might beat me, but you can't stop my prayers. You might knock me down, but you cannot stop my prayers. You might undermine me, but you can't stop 
my praise. You might even misgender me, but you can't stop my praise. Do I have any praises in the house on today? Every now and then, I believe that you got to be like the old mothers and old grandmothers. Anybody had a good grandmother who were not famous, whose names did not appear on the women's history mom's list, but they knew how to release a midnight praise. Anybody in here know anything about a midnight praise? Sometimes it will come to you in the midnight hour just how blessed you are. Sometimes it will hit you in the midnight hour all that the Lord has done. Sometimes it will wake you up in the midnight or wee hours in the morning just how good God has been and how God continues to make a way out of nowhere. And when you get it now, you have to get out of bed. Anybody ever had to get out of bed because the Lord was speaking to you? You have to walk the floor. Women were mistreated during the suffering. 
suffrage movement. But yet they continued to stand up for what was right. And they continued to speak that things needed to change. Many of us have had situations where we were hurt because of who we are. We've been traumatized and tortured just for being gay, just for being lesbian, just for being transgender. We've been mistreated and mocked just because of the color of our skin. We've been outcast and degraded just for being authentic and speaking our truth. We've been denied access and abused because of our gender. We've been jailed and murdered, hung from trees, arson, beat, redlined, profiled, and castrated because of who we are and because of the fact that others hate the gift of God in us. But through it all, church, we have prevailed, we have soared, we have reached greater heights, and we refuse to stop giving God the praise. No matter what we tell the enemy do, we witness our God do greater. Somebody needs to hold on to the fact that our God is greater than anything that will ever come against us. And so in the midnight hour now, Paul and Silas managed to still get a prayer through. In the midst of the pain of the socks that were wrapped around their feet, just imagine that were tied around their ankles, they managed to still get a prayer through. In the midst of their pain being in their hearts, they managed to get a prayer and a song through. I imagine there was a press that had to occur in order for them to get a prayer even to be uh, released from their lips. They had to press through the anger they had for being beat just because they were being obedient to the spirit. They had to press through the hurt that they felt in their body from the open flesh that was on their backs. They had to press through the agony they felt in their spirit about whether God would ever deliver them or bring them out of their current situation. They had to press through what their eyes could see because it looked like to them and everybody else that it was over. They had to press through the voices that kept telling them to give up and that they were fighting a losing battle. Anybody ever had the voices speaking into your ear negative things about the assignment that God had given you? They had to press through all of that and manage to still be able to utter a prayer to the Most High God. Have you ever been at a point, church, where things were so heavy on you until you felt like you couldn't even pray? You felt like you didn't even have the words to say. You felt like there was nothing left in you to even open your mouth and say to the Lord. But I came to tell you that's when you know you need some Holy Ghost help because you're in the midst of the storm. Many women of old said when you were in the storm and you had heartache that you could not explain, sometimes you just needed to moan and God would hear your moan. Anybody know about a moan? before the Lord. I believe that the moan was a pushing beyond the blockade that was trying to hinder you from communicating with God. And so I want to suggest to you today that a push and press must precede your praise. It ain't just going to come out on its own church when you're going through family hurt and family challenges. It ain't just going to flow from your lips when you're going through the midst of tears because nobody understands you and somebody just trying to take your life. It ain't just going to be in your mouth when you've been beaten, broken, and beat or bruised because of who you are and who you love. It ain't when you've been diagnosed with a terminal illness or a life-threatening disease. It ain't just going to be at the forefront of your mind. When you've been talked about, you've been assassinated, you've been alienated because somebody is jealous of you, somebody hates you, somebody misjudged you, somebody doesn't understand you. What I'm saying, church, is you got to press your praise. Your praise has got to press through all
essence, you must press because if, if you will press, there will be a shift in the atmosphere. The shift will come once you change your mindset and say, I'm no longer going to focus on the enemy to my victory. I'm no longer going to focus on the world. I'm making up in my mind that I'm going to focus on God. The shift will come once you say, in the midst of it all, I'm still going to give God the praise. When you say, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to give God the praise. That's when the shift's going to come. When you say, no matter what the doctor's diagnosis is, I'm still going to give God praise. No matter what they do to me on my job, I'm still going to give God praise. No matter how the community feels about me, I'm still going to give God praise. No matter what the religious addicts and traditional church folks say about me, I'm still going to give God praise. And when you make up in your mind, I'm still going to praise God, you will begin to see a shaking in the atmosphere. in your life. You'll see some things turn around in your life. You'll see some things go in your favor. You'll see some strongholds be broken. You'll see some yokes be destroyed. You'll see that everything you desire, God will release it into your hands. And it'll be all because you are willing to push and press to give God the praise. Somebody ought to push and praise God today. One thing that has become very clear, church, is that if you continue to praise God, your praise will reach beyond you. The Bible says that all doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. The Amplified says here that everyone's shackles were unfastened. So you need to know that your praise explosion will extend beyond you. Your praise will reach others who never thought about the Lord before. Your praise will reach those who needed to hear about a Savior who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. Your praise will cause someone to realize that they need Jesus as their Lord and Savior and how much better their life will be with the Lord on their side. So if you don't get anything else from this sermon, I want you to remember that in the midst of all that's going on in your life, don't ever lose your praise. Don't give Satan the joy to know that he calls you to lose your praise. Don't give Satan that victory. Near the end of the song, Jermaine Hawkins testifies that after praying and praising God a little while, she went in for surgery. And when they opened her up, there was no cancer anywhere in her body. The Lord had removed it all. That's why she sings, I never lost my hope. I never lost my joy, but most of all, I never lost my praise. Church, if the Lord has done anything for you, I came to say never lose your praise. If the Lord has brought you out, never lose your praise. If the Lord has healed your body, I came to say
in your life that was not on your 